Hi everybody. In this video we're going to be taking a look at strategies that you can use in order to write a balanced equation for a chemical reaction. The reaction that we're going to look at is the decomposition of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. It has a chemical formula of NaHCO3. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reaction to identify what the products of this reaction are. I'll start playback on this video. You can see that I've placed baking soda in a test tube, uh, which I've stoppered. We're heating this with a Bunsen burner, and you can see that there's a collection system which is gathering a gas. We'll go ahead and identify the gas being produced by this reaction in just a little bit. There are some other things that we want to consider um, to identify reactants here. So we can see that there's quite a bit of gas being generated. Now, let's zoom in a little bit more closely on the, um, on the test tube, and when we do that, we should be able to identify some other important products of this chemical reaction. As we look closely here at this, we can see that there's actually condensation. That means that there's water vapor that's being formed by this reaction. Let's identify another product of this reaction. I'll go ahead and play back another video. This one is showing us, uh, rather here, a candle burning inside of a beaker. And you're going to see here that the candle becomes extinguished right there. And this lets us know that carbon dioxide is also being produced by this reaction. Let's go ahead and write now the balanced equation for this reaction. We've already identified that water was one of the products of this reaction. We saw the condensation inside of the test tube. We also identified that carbon dioxide was being produced, causing the candle to be extinguished. The other product of this reaction is sodium carbonate, which has a chemical formula of Na2CO3. So let's work through a strategy that we can use to balance this chemical equation. So as we take a look at this process, we want to track each different element. How many of these are present before the reaction takes place? How many are present after the reaction takes place? Interpreting this formula right here, I can see that there's one sodium, there is one hydrogen, the number of carbons is one, and then the number of oxygens is given to me by this subscript. So there are three oxygens present here. Now, the delta symbol here means that we're applying heat to the sodium bicarbonate in order to cause it to decompose, to break down. We can see that after the reaction process, we've got two sodiums present. We have two hydrogens found right here, so I'm going to record that. We can also see that the number of carbons is located right here and right here. So that, I need to add the two of those together. There are two carbons. Now, we can't create matter, we can't destroy matter, so we're going to have to uh, do some work to, in order to make these numbers work out for us. Finally, the number of oxygens that we evaluate, there are two here, one here, and three here. So we need to add all those together to come up with the overall number of six. So we can see we have differences here. We need to bring these in alignment to make them the same. We're going to do this by adding coefficients in front of the sodium bicarbonate right here. That's going to change the number of sodiums to 2. That's going to change the number of hydrogens also to 2. It's also going to change the number of carbons to 2. And we can see I've written that in right here. Finally, 2 multiplies by 3 to give us the number of oxygens, so that will change to 6. At this point, we've now written a balanced chemical equation, we can check off that the sodium numbers are the same, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. All these values are checking out to be the same. So we, at this point, have a balanced chemical equation. This is important because this allows the reaction to follow the law, conservation of matter, which states that we can't create nor can we destroy matter in a chemical reaction process. All right, everybody, that's been a look at one strategy that you can use in order to write a balanced chemical equation. Thank you for watching.